Hi ladies. Um, so, <laughs> I know it's been a very long time. It has been eight weeks since my last update. And my last update was actually at eight weeks. So, the reason I have not been on is because I have been so exhausted. I cannot do anything. It's getting better, but for the last, I don't know, maybe week, week and a half, I've had a little bit more energy, but before that, I was literally in bed for 20 hours a day. So I just, just making a video has seemed like an overwhelming task, and I didn't, it was just not on the top of my priority list. So, anyway, um, let's get started, because we got a lot to cover. Um, so we left off at 8 weeks. So for 9 and 10 weeks, um, I have my notes on my phone. It's a very long list, so if I'm looking down a lot, that's why. Um, for 9 and 10 weeks, just exhausted. Um, my boobs were sore, but they were getting better. It was, um, I think 8 weeks that they started, the pain kind of started going away. And I could tell they were getting bigger. Um, but the, the tenderness was not as bad. Nothing that I would eat would ever taste good. I mean, I would crave things because they sounded good or they looked good on, like, a commercial or something. But then I would eat it and it would taste like cardboard or just, just not taste right. So, um, I stopped really indulging any cravings that I had. They were very few and far between, but I just quit worrying about it because I knew it wasn't going to taste right. And I had no appetite. Um, I was queasy all the time. Like, from the time I would be awake to the time I would go back to sleep. And it wouldn't, eating wouldn't make it better or worse. It wouldn't change the queasiness. It just was always there. So, I quit caring what I eat. I just made sure I ate something. Even though it wasn't a lot. It was really only one meal a day that I was able to get down. I started noticing it was getting really, really hard to breathe when I would exert myself at all and I thought it was probably just due to lack of activity because I wasn't doing anything but I would go up the stairs and I wouldn't be able to breathe enough to talk for about two minutes I would have to catch my breath for that long before I could like hold a conversation and I just figured it was a regular pregnancy symptom because you know they they listed on your on the line as a pregnancy symptom but it was to the point that it was very extreme and you know usually when it's a pregnancy thing it's because the baby is pushing excuse me on your diaphragm or um, you know just is growing so your lungs have to work harder but I was so early I knew it wasn't that um, for about a week in there I wasn't sleeping very well and when I would lay down I would start coughing and it was only when I laid down and it was just dry coughing. I mean, and it was, it would last maybe five minutes and then it would be done. So, I thought, well, you know, maybe it's just because it's getting to be winter and it's dry out. I didn't know. Okay, and at ten weeks, at that point, I had lost about eight pounds. So, I started the pregnancy at 194 and so I was down to 186 at that point because I would only eat one meal a day and you know I would get full so fast that it was not very much food so anyway um, at 10 weeks exactly it was on a Sunday um, I woke up and I actually was coughing up mucus which hadn't happened yet at this point it was, like I said it was still dry coughing but the mucus actually had blood in it so I knew that had nothing to do with pregnancy and so I called the nurse hotline since my clinic wasn't open that day and they said I should go to the ER. Well, since it was only in the morning and it only lasted for maybe five minutes that I was seeing any blood, I figured I would wait till the next day and go to my clinic um, instead of going to the emergency room. So I went in and they did a D-dimer blood test which uh, measures for uh, blood clot in your lungs. and they didn't get the results right away so the doctor called me that night at about six o'clock and said 
you need to go to the emergency room because your D-dimer came back with very elevated levels with a high probability of you having a blood clot in your lung. So my husband took me to the emergency room and they ended up doing a CAT scan of my lungs and we found out I have a blood clot in each one of my lungs. So that's fun. <laughs> Um, it's called a pulmonary embolism, and if not caught and treated, uh, it's potentially fatal. So I was very grateful that we actually went in and got it, you know, dealt with in time. And the way they deal with it is I now have to give myself a shot of Lovenox, which is a blood thinner um, anticoagulant, twice a day until the end of my pregnancy. And... So that is why I was so out of breath and part of the reason why I've been so exhausted because my body is just working that much harder to get oxygen circulating. But when I was at the emergency room, they checked my, my pulse, my blood pressure, and my oxygen saturation and all of them were perfect. So um, I don't know what that indicates, but it was a good sign. So that was at 10 weeks exactly. And... Um, at 10 weeks, the baby was the size of a green olive, so that was fun. It's, I really think it's fun to, like, I don't know, I'm just obsessed with the daily growth of my baby. So I have all these daily pregnancy apps on my phone, and so it's always been really fun to be able to tell people how big the baby is. So for 11 and 12 weeks, um, my breasts kind of got to the point where they didn't really hurt anymore. And my appetite was about the same. I got, I started getting really thirsty around 10 weeks. And so I've been drinking a lot of water, which is good, but it's not normal for me. Because I normally don't like water. So that's been a good, good change. One of the good symptoms, I guess. So at 11 weeks, the baby was the size of a prune. At 12 weeks, my exhaustion started easing up just a little bit, where... I wouldn't be awake longer, but when I was awake, I would feel more alert. So that has been such a blessing. Okay, so also in 12 weeks, I started realizing it was hard to get comfortable at night. So I have started figuring out what positions are and aren't comfortable, and I think I have about four that I've found that are not flat on my back because you're not supposed to do that when you're pregnant and then I used to be a stomach sleeper but now that's they say you can do it until it's you know until it's not comfortable anymore and right now it's just not comfortable and it's not because I even have a bump it's just because it's not comfortable I also started noticing that for the first time ever in my life I'm one of the lucky people who does not suffer from body odor I just don't, I've never had it. I don't wear deodorant because I don't need it. Um, once in a while, if it's like a really hot, sweaty day, I'll put it on more for my comfort, but it's not because I smell bad. So now I was trying on a shirt <laughs> and I was like, what is that smell coming from? And it was me. So I finally bought some deodorant. I mean, I had some really, really old stuff from 10 years ago that has lasted me this long because I don't ever use it, but I bought a new thing of it that smelled kind of neutral so that it wouldn't make me sick. And I put that on after my showers. Well, showers, speaking of which, starting at about 12 weeks, I was getting really, really, uh... I don't know what the term is, but I was starting to feel like I was going to pass out when I was in the shower. And I realized it was from the steam. So I think it's from the pulmonary embolisms um, making it already kind of hard to breathe. And then you put the steam in there and it just makes it so I can't breathe at all. So I would start feeling like I was going to throw up and I would feel like I was like my vision would start getting black on the edges. And I was, so I would have to turn the water temperature down. I mean, I never had it super hot anyways, but... Um, yeah, so it was just the heat in there was making that, uh, not comfortable. So my showering was getting to the point where I wasn't looking forward to it. Um, but it's getting, it's getting better now. And I just start, try to start out with the water not so hot. 
or warm. <laughs> um, and at 12 weeks, I went in for my 12 week appointment, and the doctor um, tried to find the heartbeat with the Doppler, and she tried for like 10 minutes and she could not find it. She said she could hear it, but we couldn't, like, we wouldn't have known that that's what we were hearing, so she wanted us to be able to hear it or see it. So she went and got the little portable ultrasound machine and brought that in. So we got another ultrasound at 12 weeks, and I will put in a picture of that here. So our little baby actually looked like a baby at 12 weeks. It was so cool because at the seven and a half week ultrasound, it just looked like a tiny little, like, I don't know, grain of rice or something. And then at this one, you actually see the profile and you see the little hands and ugh, it was so exciting. And then I could see the baby moving and the, the doctor kept saying, hold still, baby, because she couldn't get the heartbeat because they kept wiggling. <laughs> so that was fun. Um... And they were doing fine. She didn't do any measurements or anything. She just wanted to get the heartbeat. So she measured the heartbeat and it was 158, I want to say, beats per minute at that point. So she said it looked really good and baby looked really good. And at 12 weeks it was the size of a lime. Her 13 weeks is pretty much the same. My energy was coming back again, you know, to where... Um, I could actually do stuff when I was awake, like, not just sit in my chair and watch TV or be on the computer. You know, it was like I could actually get up and be physically moving around and doing stuff. Not for very long. I mean, I'd still get really tired really fast. But that started at about week 13. Um, the queasiness started to go away about that time, where I would feel it come and go throughout the day, but it wasn't constant anymore, so that was good. Um, but I did start getting congested at night, and I am still am. It's, it's getting worse, where I lay down, and my nose is instantly stuffed. So I end up breathing through my mouth until it starts to drain a little bit. So that's kind of annoying, because I'm not a mouth breather. Um, so for 13 weeks, the baby was the size of a plum. At 14 weeks... Okay, so at 14 weeks... It was pretty much the same symptoms as 13 weeks. However, by this point, I was already down um, 14 pounds. So I started at 194, and I was down to 180. And again, it's just because I wasn't up long enough to eat several meals a day. You know, I would, even if I ate at breakfast and then ate dinner, it's still, because I got full so fast, it wouldn't be that much food. So I've just been continuously losing weight through this pregnancy, and, um, so I was down 14 at 14 weeks. Um, at that point, the baby was the size of a peach. At 15 weeks, which is a week ago, uh, my energy has still been getting better. Um, my appetite is actually slowly coming back to the point where now I see something on TV and I feel like I have to have it. Like, I see pizza and I'm like, oh, I really want pizza. Or I see you know, chocolate-covered pretzels. I'm like, oh, those look really good. I really have to get some of those. And it's not because they taste really good. It's just because the thought of it in my mind <laughs> apparently says I have to have that. But my main cravings in the past, I don't know, week or so have been buffalo chicken, uh, mainly from Applebee's. I love their hot buffalo chicken um, boneless wings. They're so good. And so I've had that a few times when they have their half-price appetizers. And then, um, I just started this week craving chocolate milk, which I always love, but now it's like, I feel like I just have to have it. Like, that is my, those are my two things where I could just have them every day, all day, and that would be fine with me. I started getting constipated again. Um, once you get hemorrhoids when you're pregnant, you pretty much have them throughout the pregnancy, is what my research has said. So, of course, that's always been there, but it, it only bleeds... Um, when I'm constipated. So for the first couple weeks when I first got the hemorrhoids, it was bleeding, and then that healed. But now that I'm constipated again, sometimes it starts bleeding again. So it's kind of like a, I don't know, it's like a circle. You just, it comes and goes. So, um, I haven't.
tried my prune juice yet. I just, I'm not looking forward to drinking prune juice. It's so icky. <laughs> I'm 16 weeks today, so around 15 weeks, I noticed that my boobs have gotten a lot bigger. I mean, I've, before I gained all my weight, um, my top weight was 202. So, before I got married, I think my top weight was 170. And at that point, I was like, like half of an A cup. And so now, when I got measured about three or, f no, it must have been four or five weeks ago, she said I was a, a B cup. So to go from a half of an A to a full B is pretty, you know, amazing. <laughs> and now I'm even bigger than that. Like, I can tell. Like, my sports bras, they're not a, a cup size. They're just, you know, large or extra large or whatever. I think mine's a large and they're starting to be too tight, like everywhere. They just feel tight. So I need to probably get some more of those that are a bigger size eventually. And so at 14 weeks and six days, which was a Saturday, so let's see, today's Tuesday. So not this past Saturday, but the Saturday before that. So a week and a half ago, I got up to go to the bathroom in the morning and I noticed blood and I was like okay that's not normal so normally when I see blood it's from the hemorrhoids and you know sometimes wiping too vigorously can make them bleed or whatever you know just whatever so I've never really been worried about it because I've always made sure that's where the blood source is well this time that's not what it was coming from it was coming from my vagina and so of course I broke down and I just started bawling because that's what happened when I had my miscarriage was I was bleeding and I called the nurse hotline again and since it was a Saturday my clinic's not open till Monday they said that I should be seen within 24 hours um, because I didn't have any cramping or pain with it and it was just a very minor amount of blood it was just, I wiped once, and I saw a tiny speck, so I wiped again, and it was kind of like streaks of blood on the toilet paper, and then I tried to find more, and there wasn't any more. So it was just that little tiny bit. And so they said, well, it's not urgent to, like, right this second, but you need to be seen within 24 hours. So I thought, well, I'll just go in, because it's either today or tomorrow. Either way, I have to go to the emergency room, because my clinic's not open. So I went to the emergency room that night. And um, the doctor did a pelvic exam, and he didn't see anything. He said there was a little bit of spotting up near my cervix, but that he couldn't find the source of the bleeding, and it was so very little that he didn't wasn't worried about it. And they did another ultrasound to see if there was any bleeding from the inside anywhere, and they couldn't find any. So he said because you're on the blood thinners, it could just be that a blood vessel randomly broke, or, you know, there's just the something happened where there was an easier chance of bleeding than if you weren't on your blood thinners. So they weren't worried about it at all. However, they did find out that I had a yeast infection. So he said that could be the reason that, you know, it makes your, um, the inside of your vaginal walls more inflamed, so it's easier for them to bleed. So anyway, he gave me a prescription for Monistat, so I just got done with that this past Sunday. It was my last dose. And so that's hopefully been resolved. But in the process, I got another ultrasound, and the baby was measuring two days ahead of time this time. So my baby is growing, even though mom hasn't been eating a lot. My little one is definitely taking what they need. And I'm very grateful for that. So I will insert a picture of that one here. And today, I am 16 weeks and 2 days. Oh, and for 15 weeks, the baby was the size of an apple. For 16 weeks, um, kind of the same as last week. I have started noticing the past week, though, that my the sides of my abdomen there will be like these shooting pains once in a while and that is the round ligament pain and sometimes 
it lasts for, you know, a few minutes, and sometimes it's just really quick. Depends on what the movement is that causes it. But when I lay down, my front, like, pubic bone area will hurt if I try to raise one leg and not the other. It's really weird. So, <laughs> I can't just, like, move one leg. I have to move both legs at the same time. I finally can feel my uterus. Um, I've had this fat, bloated bump since day one, but I can suck it in and it goes flat. So I know that that's not a baby bump. Everybody's convinced it is, but it's not. But I can feel where my belly is getting hard where the baby, where the uterus is. So that's really fun. And I, I um, put my husband's hand on it yesterday and he could feel it too. So that's really fun. It, it makes it a little more real, you know, when you can feel it. I had my 16 week appointment yesterday and it was very quick. Um, we just went over the, you know, stuff about the yeast infection and um, she got the Doppler and we were able to hear the heartbeat with the Doppler. And that was it. It was a very quick appointment. So um, she said everything looks good. The uterus is measuring good. Um, she said the baby's very active because she had to keep moving the Doppler to get the heartbeat. So she said, that's really good. Um, and my next appointment is February 2nd, and that is our 20-week appointment. So we will find out the gender, and we will have our anatomy scan. So I'm very excited. I've been taking a poll to see what everybody thinks, and so far it is no contest. Everybody thinks it's going to be a boy. So, <laughs> including me. I want a girl. Um, I want one of each, but I... I don't know. I think if I had to pick, I would do a boy first and then a girl, but I just really want a girl. So I don't know. We'll see. Everybody thinks it's a boy. I think it's a boy. It's probably a boy. The last thing I wanted to say is that I think, I think, I don't know, but on 14 days, or 14 weeks and 2 days, I am almost positive that I felt the baby for the first time. It was it felt like something was rolling, like, I don't know, it was just like this rolling sensation, and I've had that, I don't know, three or four times since then, and it's always on the right side of my, you know, where my uterus would be, which is where they always find the heartbeat, so I'm pretty sure that's what it was, so I was really, really, like, that was just so exciting, because, you know, a lot of women who are first-time moms don't get to feel it until maybe 20 weeks or even more. So if that's what it was, I was really excited. Um, that is it for this update, and I don't know when I'll be back to do another one. Um, you know, it took me eight weeks to get this one up, so who knows. <laughs> but hopefully sooner than that this time, at least for the gender reveal. If nothing else, I will get up a video with the gender. So I will see you ladies later, and thank you for watching. Bye!